This is a video on comparing two proportions. The question states, is there a difference between the percentage of Democrats and Republicans that cast their vote? In the last election, 95 of the 271 randomly surveyed Democrats voted, and 80 of the 200 randomly surveyed Republicans voted. Use a level of significance alpha equals 0 0.05. So let's start by stating our null and alternative hypotheses. We want to find out if there's a difference between the percentages of Democrat and Republicans who voted. So I let H naught be P sub D, the proportion of Democrats who voted, equal P sub R, the proportion of Republicans who voted. For H1, I let P sub D not equal to P sub R, because we want to find out if there's a difference. We don't want to see if the Democrats had more voters or fewer voters. We want to find out just if there's a difference, so we have not equal to. Now let's write down our cast of characters. First, we have x sub d equals 95. That represents the number of Democrats who voted was 95. n sub d, the number of Democrats in the survey, was 271. For the Republicans, we have x sub r is 80 because there were 80 Republicans who voted. And n sub r is 200 because there were 200 Republicans who voted. Now let's find out if we could use the normal distribution to approximate this binomial distribution. So we need to find out if np and nq are both greater than 5 for both the Democrats and the Republicans. NP, that is the number of successes, and for Democrats, that was 95, and 95 is greater than 5. NQ for the Democrats, that means the number of failures or the number of Democrats who did not vote, that's 271 minus 95, which is 176, which is also greater than 5. For the Republicans, NP is the number of Republicans who voted, and that was 80, and that's greater than 5. And NQ for the Republicans is 120, that was the number of Republicans who did not vote, 200 minus 80, and that's also greater than 5. So since all four are greater than 5, we can use a normal distribution to approximate this binomial distribution and continue on. So now let's use our calculator. So here's the calculator, and I want to first go to stat, tests, and the test I want is a two-proportion z-test. Notice that we have two samples, and we're testing to see if the proportions are different, and we're able to use z because our NP and Q for both Republicans and Democrats are both greater than five. So that's number six. I could hit enter. It asks us for X1. X1 was 95. I'm gonna let D Democrat be the first variable. So X1 is 95, so 95 and enter. N1, that's the number of Democrats who voted, that's 271. Enter. X2, that's X for the Republicans, which is 80, so 80. Enter. And then N2 is the number of Republicans who voted, that's 200. Enter. Now our H1 was that P sub D is not equal to P sub R, so I hit enter on P1 not equal to P2. 
and I go down and I hit calculate. And the important thing that we get from the calculator is first the z value, and that is about negative 1.10. And the p value is also important, and that was 0 0.27 about. So now let's go back to the PowerPoint. So here's the PowerPoint, and remember our calculator gave us that z was about negative 1.10, and the p value was about 0 0.27. Let's look at this on a picture and see how the z value that we get helps us decide to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in the picture, our critical value, since we have a two-tailed test, the critical values are negative 1.96, and 1.96. The z value was negative 1.10, and notice that is between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. So that's in our fail to reject region. So that tells us that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We can confirm this also by looking at the p value. In particular, the p value which was about equal to 0 0.27, is greater than the level of significance 0 0.05. And when the p-value is greater than the level of significance, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And that confirms what we saw when we used the picture with the rejection region and the fail to reject region. So now let's state our conclusion we can conclude that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is insufficient evidence to make a conclusion about the difference between the percentage of Democrats and Republicans that cast their vote. And I'm done with the problem.